Hi there, I'm Olivia Dudek and I'm talking with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Everyone, I have the pleasure in the company of Olivia Dudek today. Uh, I'm going to be chatting about her, the new film that she's starring in, and also find out a bit more about yourself as well. So, mm-hmm. hey, again, welcome. Uh, hi, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, thanks for coming along. It's great. It's, um, it's all, I always love talking to new people and obviously actors and stuff and finding out more about you. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and seeing what's uh, new people as well. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, that's what I Skype's great. It's, it's great, you know. Obviously, um, one thing I do find about this place is, it's technology's come on so great that say, like, you know, I can be in the UK, you can be over like, four, six, seven thousand miles away, and it's it's it, you can have conversations face to face. It's brilliant. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I mean, I have um, a lot of nieces and nephews and two sisters, one in New York, one actually in Central America, wow. and um, it's great to be able to FaceTime with them and um, you know have my feel like I have my niece you know like a foot away from me so it's a blessing for sure fantastic mm-hmm. yeah it is, it is good yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> except when your cat's cut I'm just checking again sorry my cat <laughs> I can hear the door moving so it's like you know, there's four of them like I said <laughs> I'm sure one of them will come and come and jump up in a minute <laughs> Hello. brilliant so I mean obviously we're here today to talk about Anna which we will get around to <laughs> which is a fantastic exciting opportunity for you so yeah. um, kind of where did you start from obviously how did you get into this acting I, I always ask this it's, it fascinates me all the different stories and how people got into it mm-hmm. okay um yeah mine's pretty straightforward I mean my background is uh, as a dancer and so I went to New York when I was 18 to pursue dance and so I was going to a dance school and kind of on the route to becoming um a prince of all ball- uh, like a prima ballerina and a company and it was when I was there that um I started auditioning for things outside of my dance school and I ended up booking a MasterCard commercial and it was, and I had never really worked in the medium of film before. I had done like school plays and, you know, obviously tons of dance live performance, like traveling around the world, even internationally in Sydney, Australia and Tokyo, Japan. But it wasn't until that commercial that I had like one-on-one experiences where I'm talking with the director and the crew of that that I really, you know, for one, I caught the acting bug shooting it. And then it was like just talking to the crew that they were really encouraging me to pursue acting. So um, it wasn't too long after that that I left my dance school in, you know, in the Big Apple and then moved to L.A. to start studying and pursue acting. Fantastic. (laughs) That's a really nice story. Um, Ballet as well. That's one of the uh, the beautiful dance forms i see so uh, and getting to prima donna as well that 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 would that's a spectacular in itself to be that for you know because that, that's the uh well from yeah. what i know of ballet not that i know much but that's obviously the critic yeah I mean, definitely and um, so uh, when i was a little girl i mean i was interested in a lot of different types of performance and art forms but i thought i wanted to do that you know become a prima ballerina mm-hmm. but then when I was in New York that I realized that wasn't really for me and that acting was actually more exciting and wanted to pursue that path, if that makes sense. Thank you. Cool. Oh. Thank you. And thanks for correcting me from a oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll do. yeah. <laughs> Call it whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Cool, yeah, so the prima, I mean, you know, I mean, we see that a lot. There's lots, obviously, dance is very popular as well at the moment with all the shows that are on, which is, you know, yeah. it's great to see um, that it's coming out to this forefront too. Yeah. For sure. So obviously you started in that. You started in that. Um, you went to the obviously the the, the, the uh, commercial spot and moved on from there. Mm-hmm. So where did you? I mean, you have got quite a nice um, resume, shall I say, oh, from, of, of work that you've done. So what's what's been your most favourite piece that you've done so far? Out except for Anna, I'll say because we we'll oh, to that one. <laughs> I mean, you knew I was going to say that because that's <laughs> obvious answer. Oh well, um, you know. Actually, I don't talk much about this, but um, a long time ago, I worked as um, a casting assistant. Mm -hmm. And so I I know you're probably asking me what role I played in, like I was the actress in. But, you know, I did get a lot of behind the scenes experience um, being a casting assistant and working in casting and seeing how that world works. And I did get to work on some really cool projects. I mean, no matter what they were, commercials, print jobs, music videos, but even like behind the scenes, like seeing, you know, working with a director and starting from like the very bottom level from him sharing his vision with the people that are going to cast it, which I was the assistant. 
so I got to watch that, to seeing, like, it finally made and edited and, and, you know, like, seeing the whole process. So, you know, yeah, I talk a lot about acting, but I had a lot of side jobs, you know, before I, like, got to where I am now. Yeah. And so I would say working in casting taught me a lot and, like, um, I had a lot of really cool experiences there and, like, just seeing how it's run and th how things are, yeah, created and made. Brilliant. No, that's great. Thank you. Um, it's, it's nice to see that there's a difference there. And I find a lot of people... It, the, the broad experience people can get I mean I did one I was in an independent film it was a really small one about three years ago it was just a friend's <laughs> director they've put it out there but I spent about 12 hours of the day for it wasn't much for the filming that I was in but I spent the rest of the day uh -huh. watching everyone because I found it absolutely fast like you just said there the, the, get, it's, that, it, it's <laughs> exciting and it, it's hard to even stop myself, like, even in Anna. Like, I mean, yes, I was in the majority of it, but there were some flashback scenes to, um, like, the you know, young version of Anna to, like, the five-year-old that played my younger self. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't necessarily needed or in those scenes, but, like, I just liked being on set in all forms. I mean, yes, because it, like, felt like my movie and, like, I wanted to, like, know what was going on in all, yeah. all the time. But also, you know, just watching the crew work, just watching the, you know, the P busy PAs, just watching people like literally build sets or like strip things down. And they're like, no, actually, we want the like we want the background to be red and watching them just like paint it on the spot. Like it's it's fascinating to me, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I've always been very, you know, just like eager to learn and like even. I mean, when I first came out here, like, I interned at an agency because I wanted to learn about the business side of things, and, you know, I even worked on wardrobe for a commercial, like, and, like, did the styling for it because, you know, someone recommended me because I had good style and knew yeah. I would know what I was doing, and so, I mean... Now I don't have the time to do all of those things, but like along my way, it was so fascinating. Like just all the different jobs I had, you know, like, you know, my dad used to call me a jack of all trades and like, I just always had, you know, like so many different jobs, like one to like survive and make ends meet, but also because, you know, it was like, if you have to have a, a side job, might as well make it something you're in, you know, that you yeah, can learn something. Yeah, from. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good philosophy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Or you can have a side job that you just really get bored in, and just you know. So, but yeah, to to do something you're actually going to learn and take away from it, which will better you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank. You. I mean, I definitely have those as well, so I'm not exempt. But <laughs> I mean, yes, I do. I think I get. I think like I, I've had so many different side jobs in my past mm -hmm. because. I, I I do get bored with it though, but then at the same time, then I pick up something else because you know I you know unfortunately I you know I see it as temporary, but it's like might as well just learn something else if it's only going to last for a short period of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you get bored quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, that's great. Um, and obviously, with working with there as well, obviously you know as I say, it gives you that rounded insight into everything. Um, so. All those various roles that you've had obviously led up into this one that you've got now. So what can you tell me about Anna, which is a fantastic role, by the way. Congratulations for landing well, that one. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but I can tell you this much, um, that it is the story of a young girl who is a ballerina turned stripper. And um, she is an immigrant. She is from Mexico and doesn't have any papers nor family. And she is doing everything she can to support her mother who is on life support in the hospital. And um, yeah, so I think her backstory and how high those stakes are dealing with being an immigrant and mm -hmm. uh, being young and not having many resources uh, to work with, you know, kind of explain the arc that the story takes and why she makes the decisions that she does um, towards the end of the film. Okay. So, no, that sounds yeah. good. It sounds like it's going to be quite an emotional move, an emo moving one. Um, I was speaking to someone recently, I actually. Oh, sorry, carry on. <laughs> That's that's you're right about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, just from the sound of it, and, and obviously reading it, it was like, okay, that yeah, it's going to be a good film. Yeah. It sounds like it's going to be really good, but obviously very uh, a powerful one, uh, yeah. which I think addresses a lot of social concerns around, obviously, which are current in the today, uh, which which are going through. Um, it's actually I was talking to the, the last guest I had on my show. Actually, was, um, mm -hmm. we were talking about the fact that there were some storylines, and obviously Anna is a, is the whole film is going to be is based on the decisions mm -hmm. that someone makes. And it's it's people's perceptions of that person, and I'm I'm guessing that's how the film might go with people the way some of the jobs perhaps that might be perceived like the stripper and stuff people might perceive that. But if you look behind, you've got to look behind a character or a person 
um, yeah. and find out what why you know why they're making those decisions why uh, they've gone yeah. to certain decisions because they're not bad decisions they're just decisions that they've made in order to support the fam for example for support the, 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 your character's mother uh, in hospital yeah. and stuff and pay yeah. for those bills um, mm-hmm. so, so yeah you can, you, it's trying to get around yeah. I think I'm getting around the right way of saying what I'm trying to get to. you know it's just not, you have yeah. to look behind people and, and look mm-hmm. in depth and understand a, a character and a yeah. person I think no I, I mean I wholeheartedly agree I think it really has the power to um, help like promote empathy just in terms of like our humanity and what anyone is going through because when you are actually playing a part like that it's impossible to judge the situation Mm -hmm. because you have the backstory so you're just like okay if I'm in this situation and that's and these are my resources and this is my background and this is where I'm going and these are my stakes and options like of course I would make that decision Mm -hmm. well you feel like that when you put yourself in the shoes but from the outside it's so easy to be like you did what you said what and so just like that that judgmental and I'm guilty Mm -hmm of judging people, whether it's their strangers or fam- close people I know or, yeah. you know, anyone. Um, and so we all have to check ourselves, you know, when we are judging someone to just, yeah, like bring out that empathy and love for someone else. Like what if I was in their shoes or also like don't judge people because they can just very easily judge you. And you're like, okay, you know, I'm not perfect. I've gone through things and made decisions and you know, really it's what I needed to do at that time or whatever it was. So, um, yeah, that was, it was a fun role to play. <laughs> Excellent, and it, yeah, and it sounds very great. I, I love uh, a film where you've got that that deep connection, and you can you can you know the character driven stuff uh, more than you know. I mean, I love the action films. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> but something yeah. where you can <laughs> they're great, they're brilliant. But a storyline which can really drag you in and really make you feel uh you're you're part of that story and you can you know like you say the empathy and brings i mean I'm, you, I, I love that kind of thing i'm very sort of yeah. emp- empathetic if that's a word <laughs> so i can yeah. i really so i will I'll, I'll end up with floods of tears probably watching this film because as I'll, as I'll go through the story i mean yeah you got it like uh, when i read the script i just bawled and it was just purely the script and the story and then i was and then i got to like <laughs> i get this what it how what an honor, but like this, it's just, the it stories. it's amazing. And, you know, I read the script a hundred times, you know, in, in studying it and working on the part. And every time I cried and was affected in a different way, but with the same impact. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's powerful. Excellent. Excellent. How did you research for the role? Um, well, how did you prepare, sorry, should I say, for, for, to get into the, the role of Anna? So, so much, so much. Pre-production was longer than production. Right. I mean, um, yeah, like, um, so I think I initially started with a lot of one-on-one with the director, Jose. Mm-hmm. He really wanted to make sure I understood, you know, his vision and we were on the same page and also that we were comfortable working with one another. Yeah. And he just threw me so much literature, music, showed me films that he wanted to emulate. And then also we would just like go out to lunch together because, and just chit chat because he wanted to make sure we were very comfortable with, you know, so then when we were on, we're on he could give me notes and knew I wouldn't take it personally and we could just save time and money, you know? And, um, so it was with him and then also a lot of one-on-one with the choreographer that taught me, um, that was a dancer and taught me all of the routines that I would learn. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was a lot of blocking with, um, my co-star and, you know, rehearsing our scenes and then a lot of fitting with hair and makeup and wardrobe to like, just get down all of our looks. And then there was a big chunk of time where I had to just like take everything that I learned and just make it my own, you know, and really put like my stamp of an actor on it as an actor on it. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of pre-production in there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) How how long did it take to film? Because I mean, um, obviously obviously things would take a lot of different time. So how long, how long was the film? You know, I think the actual production was like three to five weeks, but yeah. That's not, mm-hmm. that's, that's not too bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, no, it felt very quick. Yeah, it felt very, very quick. Like it was over before I knew it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what was yeah. it like? I mean, you said you've worked, you'd work very closely doing one on one with Jose. So, what was it? obviously, he's director of Las Bandinas, which uh, Las Bandidas. Sorry. Uh, as well, that's one of his, one of his pieces there. So, what was it like working with him as a director? Uh, it was it was really fun. He is a ball of energy. Like <laughs> I don't. One of those people, you're like, do you sleep? Like, just constantly, like, truly, I mean, 
I don't know. I think that there are different types of directors just because anyone, like, there, as there are different types of people. And his type is just someone, like, literally doing 10 things at once at all times. Mm -hmm. Like, but doing them well, you know, but just, like, so busy. Like, you know, anytime I ask him a question, he, he can be, like, directing me, you know, call, you know, directing me. But yep. also, like, answering, but also still creating a schedule and also still, <laughs> like, perfecting that shot and also, like, or, you know, dealing with craft services and, like, perfect, like, just, like, oh, insane. <laughs> insane. And so, yeah, just, yeah, it really, directing is just, like, it's intense. Intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I was privy to seeing his style, which is, like, truly, like, a genius. Mad, mad genius, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just, like, yeah, you know, like, firing through all, on all cylinders at all times yeah. <laughs> you know? that sounds good yeah. that sounds like a perfect mix so to come in and make it and make a good film when you've got someone as energetic as that because you'll energize everybody else and and if he's yeah, doing, especially definitely. if he's doing 10 things i mean to be fair if he's doing that i'll be just sitting there watching and wondering going how do you do that <laughs> it's like you know it's like, uh, I'll be, yeah. i would be burnt out <laughs> Yeah, I totally. But you know what? I think we really, it was a smaller crew and definitely cast, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, we all really felt like a family in it. And I think like any good group of people, you all have your sh different strengths. And it felt like that. I think even the style of the DP, the director of photography or mm -hmm. cinematographer was very different than Jose's. Peyton um, Skelton uh, was our DP and has a lot of extensive work in television and Grey's Anatomy. And his style was more, was, was very different than Jose's, you know, he would like, he would come to me like sparingly and be like, and even if he could tell, well, English is Jose's second language. And so mm -hmm. I think, and it was just beautiful in a family, like we would all fill in for each other. So I think if Peyton ever real, like saw an instant of like Jose, maybe not like a, like a, a gap in our communication, um, Peyton would come in and just yeah. be like, and in, in a way and he'd be like, do it like this. And then it would click for me, but like, not that it was, you know, you know just like um, a third party kind yeah, of. Yeah. And, and there was even Raphael, the writer and of it, and he would come in with a totally different, like, manner and then offer different things and be like, oh, don't, you know, don't forget this beat in the script or, you know, or like this turn or like that this, this something about, you know, like the backstory and offer something different. Yeah. And, and like, and then different actors and different producers would like all so different you know and I'm sure my my character or like just personality you know is different from all of theirs too so I think that's what makes it if like like being like-minded is great but when you have like five different personalities you really like cover all bases you yeah. know so um but share the same vision of what you want to tell and believe in the project and are like passionately behind it so yeah, it was it was fun. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And Raphael co-stars. He didn't just help. He didn't write it as well. He actually co-stars in it too. Did you find at all, or did he? Find, did you see the well, as as it progressed that maybe he would have thought, hang on a minute, no, in, in re, maybe rewriting stuff because as they were filming, he thought ah, perhaps actually we can change it to this bit or something. Was there any of that done? Do you know? Where he Wait, might have changed, changed, as as you're filming what he's written, he's he might have changed it, thinking actually it will probably change. work better. Mm. No, I don't think actually that much changed. I think like definitely with this with the dialogue, we it remained the same yeah. because there's kind of uh, like just very little dialogue in it actually. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was not based on the dialogue, which is actually the acting technique that I study. It's not about the dialogue at all, the Meisner technique. Yep. So that was definitely at my alley, as yeah, as you know. And so yeah, but I mean, I think we were just all like in terms of the vision of the film, like literally how it wanted to be shot, because as you probably know with editing, you can tell one story like five different ways. And that's why the post production and editing has taken so long for yeah. it to be completed because you know, everyone was, like, trying to, you know, just, to, like, get it to be the best version possible, but, like, it could actually go a lot of different ways, so just constantly we were, like, you know, even, like, with wardrobe, like, there were adjustments there were, like, you know, where they would just be, like, shoot, like, we thought it looks good, but they're, like, and I want to wear that, you know, yeah. just, like, little things, like, so we were, you know, so, yeah, there, there were definitely critiques along with the way, but I think that's healthy. It means people are paying attention and present and in the moment and just making sure it's going where they originally saw it yeah. to go. Excellent. Cause that's kind of where I was getting at. That was a much more eloquent way of putting, <laughs> putting what, I trying, what I was trying to say. We, we understand it. It's yeah. just articulate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so, as I say, I mean, the film does sound. When is it released, by the way? When is it coming out? Um, it I did um, probably late of 2020. Okay, cool, excellent. Um, <laughs> is it is it's going to be a cinematic release as well? Is it or? Yeah. Brilliant. And then streaming to be determined after that. Not sure exactly what else. Yeah, yeah. I know that's 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 a long process as well. Getting those things sorted. Yeah, yeah, no, it'd be brilliant. I mean, as I say, the one I was in three years ago. I'm still waiting for that to come out. I, I haven't seen it yet myself. I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah, it becomes like the new normal. Just like you just we're like whenever you do your job and that's it you know <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> yeah excellent um and i know you're actually you're working on the first book as well i've been, yeah. I've been informed that you're working on your first book so what's that and that's about your life and your faith as well which sounds really interesting so what can you tell me about that well let's see so you know i do really know and believe that you know everything like I, i'm not an overnight success like i've been working at this and you know mm -hmm. having a lot of acting jobs for a very long time now and i do believe that when everything and i made a lot of mistakes however someone defines that and i you know when things really started coming together for me i, I feel like i was like a million different puzzle pieces like scattered everywhere and then when things like finally became a full picture like jobs that came from the past or you know lessons I learned like fully understood mm -hmm. um kind of was at the time that like my actually my faith became solidified and I actually like believed in myself because I always thought I did but really like when you believe in your calling and believe what you know and like finally get in alignment with the path that God has for you yeah. that's when you're really open and able to receive it you know when you're doubting yourself you don't so I feel that at a time when my faith became solid, um, it was actually at the time that I felt called to write this book about my journey in an autobiographical way. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of just my, like, very um, entertaining, for sure, cause it, and uh, really just painfully honest, um, you know, just testimony of my faith. And it's all set against, like, the very dark underbelly of Hollywood, um and because most of my experiences were in tinsel town and so yeah my fun stories and mistakes and things you probably wouldn't expect from me on the road to becoming an actress pretty much up until this point fantastic that sounds really good as well and i mean i guess having having faith in somewhere where you're in tinsel town like you say which is yeah. um the dark there the darkness of the, the dark what's yeah the, the yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'll, I'll, I'll say the degenerate, <laughs> you know. But just Hollywood, you know, Hollywood, you know, because movies are made here. I think a lot of the time, the you know, dark Hollywood is made, you know, in yeah. like, you know, it, it it comes literally on the screen. But you know, it, there's a dark side of everything that we oh, can yeah, fall. Definitely fall into so this is just my experience this is but it's very universal it's just like what someone of my gender my age my aspirations you know my location have experienced it in that's just the setting is in hollywood which i think people find interesting because a lot of people don't have the behind the scenes understanding of it which i have had from a very young age and yeah. i've seen like the good and the ugly but I've also seen the beautiful and how you can really, you know, like be a shining light in a lot of situations and help a lot of people, which I hope this book can and does. So, Excellent. That's, that's yeah. really great. So you, you are very multi-talented in that respect. <laughs> Uh, without, without the acting, I mean, it's great. I mean, I'm always an advocate of uh, more women in film as well, and and pushing for those lead roles, and because it's something mm -hmm. it's that's that's part of the, of the Hollywood still. That's very, in my eyes, it's yeah. still. A little, it's getting much better, but it's still a little bit behind, especially in terms yeah, of things like the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you know, actually, speaking of that, like you just bring to mind Michelle Obama, you know, and her book Becoming was a big inspiration for me. You know, um, I started writing before I read it, but I think she really empowered me to like just, you know, that everyone has a story, everyone's story is worth telling because sometimes you say, you know, like, my experiences are embarrassing or, you know, like, but you actually realize, like, that's the beauty in it, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, that's what's entertaining. That's what, and then I tell girlfriends about it or all the times when I was pitching my book that people were like, wow. And I was like, oh, I, I'm, like, so jaded because of I live here and mm -hmm. this is my life. But I forget what's interesting or what can help other people. So, um, yeah, so I hope, like, I mean, I like, 
Yeah, in the same way that Michelle Obama empowers young women, anyone that's interested in my life that I can help empower to say, like, your story is inspiring as well and to share it, you know, and just, like, continue that. Like, it's about the story in us, you know? Fantastic. And what a great inspiration to have is from Michelle Obama as well. You know, that's <laughs> definitely one of the best, well, the best first lady that we, that from a certain from the UK point of view, but always put herself across so so well and, and and overcome so much along with her husband obviously as well with the mm-hmm. and the bigotries that they they would they received and they still receive and you know to just to put that all behind them and just like mm-hmm. you say focus yeah. on their faith and just and keep going sort of. and just like you know how she says they go low i go high i mean that's yeah. like it's a powerful statement you know oh, it's yeah. really it's really amazing it so is. so many reasons to yeah, like want to emulate them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, that is part of obviously the the, the teachings anyway. Is yeah. if people are going, you know, don't come to you know in roundabout way, don't sink to their level. If they're going to be, you know, like I say, don't go low, go high. Make yourself the better person. Make yourself the higher person. Yeah, you know, that's definitely. <laughs> Yeah, and that's so powerful, like, you know, outside of acting, outside of writing, outside of the industry, just in general humanity, you know, to, like, just show love and not hold grudges and grant forgiveness, you know, like, I mean, I, I like to quote scripture and scripture the Bible, and I mean, like, just constantly forgive, you know, just as you would need to be forgiven, you know, is how the scripture says it, but it's true, you know, like, forgive seven times a day, seven times in a row, like, think about how many times you've made mistakes and need to be forgiven forgive yourself and apply that to others because we're all human you know yeah we're all, yeah and um yeah not harbor resentment and just like allow yourself to love and help other people so that is definitely powerful <laughs> <laughs> it is it's, and it's a great philosophy to have and not many people do have that anymore so it's, it's you know all, all have the faith to back it up or to push yeah, it out I as well there will be more of it sorry I have faith that there will be more of it. You know? Yeah, I do. I do. It seems to be there's especially this sort of there's a lot of movement on here. There's you know the be kind. There's a lot more recognition and a lot more uh, pushing out of this kind of a message, which is great. I think people have had think, enough now of all the bitterness. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, yeah, I mean enough of it for sure. But I think just like normalizing it, like it doesn't have to be a big grandiose yeah. like you know like you have to be the first lady to talk about it or to be nice, but just like it's like. You know, that's what's important to me is just like normalizing even my spirituality because it doesn't have to be like Christian or Christianity or like God. It's like, no, that's actually just how we like treat other people and how we live our lives, how we get on uh, like in alignment with our own path. And it's like actually very simple and very good. But like, um, yeah, it's like it doesn't have to be some far off idea, you know. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, exactly. It doesn't, yeah, like you say, it doesn't matter what faith you've got, who you, if you believe at all, or whether who you believe in. But just if you, if you pass that philosophy, of being nice to to who you know to everybody, uh, and Definitely. you can pay it forward and get it in kind. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, so obviously, with Anna coming out later this year, um, what else? Have you got anything else in the pipeline at the moment, or is there? I mean, I, I hate this question when I ask it to an actor because. There's so many. You, go to, you, you, you pretty much you never stop. You've always got auditions going. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, right now, I will say it's a very exciting time in my personal life, okay. and so that's fun. Um, so it's really great. I think you know, 2020 has been great in a lot of ways, but I feel like personal life and career-wise, you know, they're kind of just like both going at a steady pace. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, I do tend to be a private person, but yeah, exciting stuff. In my personal life, <laughs> so vague. <laughs> right, come on. I know, yeah. Come on. <laughs> but, but other than that, um, yeah. I mean, writing is like a, a very. Um, it's like that task is kind of like a not behind the scenes, but it's something that like people don't see, but it takes a lot out of me, you know. But it's also very rewarding because I feel very fulfilled when I'm doing it, and you know, and and yeah. But otherwise, yeah, definitely auditioning for well. For things across the board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't say what they are. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, having some exciting like partnerships coming out with some brands that I, I I firmly believe in, and so yeah, just exciting to see what like everything that I'm collaborating with, personal life, career wise, like just mm-hmm. where where it's headed. Because I don't know, you know, I just like serve the platform I'm given at a given time, and then I, I don't 
I don't know where it goes. <laughs> it's out of my hand. So, um, yeah, so just being open to what projects come my way, and um, we'll see. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> yeah, please do. I'll, yeah. I'll, keep, I'll be keeping a watch as well to make sure uh, you know to follow follow your career as well, uh, which would be fantastic. So before I wrap the recording up for this for today, Olivia, which is very sad because we've had a great chat, and it's already f- time oh. has flown by. I noticed <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> is it what? <laughs> sorry, yeah. What what kind of what would, advice would you give? Is there anything that you give for people who are watching or listening at the moment who may be thinking of doing either acting or ch- or doing something in their life, like you said? Is there anything you can... For advise? sure. I think that second... It's all the same thing. Doubt, fear, second-guessing yourself, questioning yourself, letting the noise or the, the societal, family, close friends, anyone you might look up to tell you no or you can't or for any reason, like maybe you're broke, you don't have the resources, you're not smart enough, you don't have the right look. Like, it's all, that's all just like the devil's work, like trying to stand in your way. If something is on your heart, you will find out why it is, um, but it's on your heart for a reason. So follow that. Follow your heart. Um, You have to. Like, you have to. You're just doing yourself and the world a disservice if you don't. So it's truly like believing in yourself. If something is, that's, that's your destiny. If it's on your heart, it's not on everyone's heart for a reason. It's very specific. You will have a certain timing, so just believe in it and go forward, and it is all about timing, and if I would have given up when people told me to give up, like, you know, so long ago when I didn't get a Blockbuster or the Power Rangers or whatever my I was set on then, I would never be where I am, so just, you know, continue with it and um, keep your head high, and it will all come full circle for you. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs>